Uh, first, I would like very, very much to, to uh, thank uh, Sofia Sakorafa and all her staff about uh, this amazing event. Uh, I think uh, most of the people who are uh, really active in the European Water uh, Framework uh, movement are in this room today, and this is great. Uh, of course, this is very gr even greater because uh, in, the, in the summertime we didn't really have the chance to, to see each other because, um, you know, what, with what happened with Brexit yes. and <laughs> uh, we had an annulation of our event. Um, actually, this goes very well with what you said about, uh, uh, Mrs. Borland said about uh, Euroscepticism. So uh, we see this rise of uh, Euroscepticism, we see this existential crisis in Europe. Much is said, yet little is being done, um, as those you know, with power and those without concur on the spreading of the so-called uh, democratic deficit in de decision-making, and yet stay inert, as if it is an unstoppable natural phenomenon like a tsunami. Uh, we can all understand, of course, why this inertia trends. Uh, and what lies ahead, a shipwreck. Nonetheless, uh, for the time being, most of us are in the EU ship deck, drinking our cocktails, while democracy, the rule of law, and the fundamentals of the social contract, which are essential for stability and prosperity in societies, are diminished and distorted. Most do not seem to care about the iceberg ahead. We count ourselves on the exceptions. As water activists, we tend to be careful with icebergs. And let me tell you about the big one we are facing since 2011 in our struggle to stop water privatization in Greece, which has miraculously appeared as a clause and condition inscribed and carved repeatedly in the country's loan agreements with its creditors. Together with a lot uh, of activists that I'm happy that we can all be together today here, unions, organizations, we have run a successful campaign. We convinced with concrete arguments the vast majority of our co-citizens, as the referendum of Thessaloniki proved, and now Greeks, like Italians in the past, like Parisians and Berliners, are contrary to this policy almost unanimously. We have presented in many occasions in Greece and abroad the rational argumentation behind our position, AVAP and AF, servicing roughly 5 million and 1 million people respectively, have already one of the cheapest tariffs in Europe. Uh, they're profitable even during the crisis and have a lot of ongoing developmental projects, some of them subsidized even by the EU. In our perplexed globalized world, nothing is perfect, of course, but in comparison to their titanic rivals of the private sector, the Greek water companies seem like, like little tidy houses in a land full of debt and risk. We've also worked hard at EU level by building alliances and pressure, and of course we participated in the Right to Water campaign, succeeding in doubling the signatory threshold for our country. Most importantly, we won a favor of a Supreme Court decision prohibiting the sale of, uh, of more than 50% stocks of the water companies. Resting on this decision, we were hoping that the case was closed and that the pride of Western civilization, its democratic institutions, we're still standing. To our ire, we discovered that Mr. Tsipras, the Greek Prime Minister, uh, who uh, has been, till 2015, one of the most vocal supporters of the ECRI right to water and a declared adversary of water privatization, has somehow been convinced to proceed with the following. First, his government has accepted to adopt the infamous asset development plan of 19 privatizations, which is a binding part of the third memorandum. In this plan, there is a provision to, pro to proceed with uh, an unnecessary and against the public interest sell of 11% of AVAP, the Athens Water Company, and 23% of AAF in Thessaloniki. And there is also a scandalous provision of a capital return of 40 million euros from AVAP's cashiers to the st stakeholders in an unprecedented mingling in a stock market company's internal affairs. These 40 million, on top of another 20, already returned in form of dividends, and the loss of 15 million in the form of an investment in Attica Bank has emptied the cashiers by 77 million and has resulted in putting to risk the economic health of the water service of 5 million people. 
as if this was not enough, Mr. Tsipras has mysteriously agreed to include both companies to the new privatization super fund, which by its statute is an entity that does not belong to the public sector and whose supervisory board is controlled by the creditors. Monsieur Jacques Lepape, a French bureaucrat and former collaborator of Christine Lagarde in the French Ministry of Finance, is now head of this board. There is no time to guide you through all the details of this new monster privatization fund, which controls most of the remaining assets of the Greek state. You can read this in this documentation leaflet we have prepared, and you can take it from there. It's in English. Uh, there is a lot of uh, interesting details about all the, uh, the way of the water privatization in Greece. Um, let me just say that in reality, not only the cashiers of AVAP were emptied, but both companies now have had their management privatized in violation of the Supreme Court decision. On top, the water services are being instrumentalized against their utility statute and are to become golden egg gooses to serve the new fund's uh, scope. Of course, we were never naive. We know very well what the lobbyists are doing behind closed doors all these years and why the giants of the private sector want to get their hands of the Greek people's property. I will not lose my time to criticize their business practices. Businesses are businesses and can be judged only as such. The real culprits, though, of the failure of the institutions I'm talking about are, I'm afraid, others residing nor far from us. I think the time for hide-and-seek is over. We will not tolerate any longer the Commission and other European institutions playing Schrodinger's cat, supporting and not supporting privatization in negotiations behind closed doors. We demand to know how the water services ended up as part of the third memorandum deal in violation of the Article 345 of the EU Treaty. We are entitled to know under the Aarhus Regulation and the Transparency Regulations, and we will not stop our struggle unless the water services get out of any kind of deals between the Greek government and its creditors. With this official document here that we have filed today, and we will share tomorrow at the press conference, we ask the European Council to disclose all relevant information and we want your support to pressure them for an answer. Whatever is the answer, it is not the answer that makes us believe the man, but the man, the answer, to paraphrase the ancient tragic dramatist Eschylus. Even if this is presented as the Greek government's sovereign decision, how are we to be convinced that there is anything sovereign about a government who has signed that it will not legislate anything without the consent of its creditors? And most importantly, who is to be held accountable about the misery, poverty, and loss of civil and human rights in Greece? Who on earth are the true culprits? And why don't they come forth and take the responsibility for their actions? We will do everything in our power, together with our friends in the European Water Movement, in Berlin, Paris, Italy, Ireland, Slovenia, Portugal, Spain, to secure for our co-citizens the right to water. We will not tolerate those who establish institutions of direct democracy and then turn them obsolete by their own lack of actions. We are not going to pretend that there is still democratic procedures by participating in written monologues about best practices in drinking water safety benchmarks when the huge iceberg of turning a deaf ear to the citizens' will and their successful struggles in all Europe is the iceberg in our EU course to legislate the human right to water, to stop the liberalization of water services in EU treaties and trade deals, to stop demanding from indebted countries to surrender their profitable water services as a prerequisite in austerity programs is the right thing to do. And it is such because it is the expressed will of the peoples of Europe. The iceberg will melt under the unflight warmth of our hearts and efforts because if you get to a point where the existing institutions will not bend to the popular will, you have to eliminate the institutions, as Noam Chomsky wisely cautions. Thank you very much.